in our own company, we are convinced that testing will be needed, testing, treating, and tracing will be needed as part of an overall part of the strategy. I, you know, we're, we were actually quite excited to hear about uh, the, um, you know, the news of the strong performance of Pfizer's uh, vaccine in their phase three trial. Um, effective vaccines are going to be an important part of a strategy that, that I think will include masking, social distancing, and testing routinely, uh, and then treating and isolating and contact tracing. And because of, of our strong beliefs, we're continuing to, to ramp up production, making a lot of effort around that. And I know that my colleagues in the industry are doing the same. In particular, we're ramping up Sophia SARS antigen. Uh, by mid-year, those test cartridges being available uh, to, to about 240 million tests per year on an annualized basis. We also have a product at the FDA currently called QuickView SARS. It's a, it's a very easy visually read assay, much like a pregnancy test that could give an individual at home or at the point of care an answer on a positive within 60 seconds or a negative within 10 minutes. And, and we think that we can get to somewhere around 50 million tests uh, per month at some point in 2021. So, again, that product is under active review at the FDA currently. And I'll just say uh, again that uh, I have a lot of colleagues in the industry that are all working on all this. So I, I do know that the numbers are big and they look daunting, but I think our industry is rising to the challenge and, and doing a pretty good job. But, but I, Doug, I guess the, the flip side to that thought process, and particularly as it relates uh, to your stock price, we were just looking at a chart there. Uh, if all does go well, if, uh, if we do reach herd immunity, if vaccines get rolled out widely and are effective, I mean, presumably the demand for testing can't last beyond that moment by this time, this time next year. Hopefully, if all goes well, the demand for tests will collapse again. Yeah, I'm not, uh, Wilfred, an expert on uh, market psychology for, for sure, but perhaps in reacting quickly to news, some investors may not have considered that there will be for several years a need to test, treat, and trace infected individuals. You know, as an example, uh, we just heard about a therapeutic Regeneron. There are therapeutics for influenza today. Today, if I'm able to actually um, run a test and detect somebody within 48 hours, the effectivity of the antivirals for influenza is dramatically better. And I would suggest the same is going to be true with COVID-19. So in the case of people who, who do get infected, we need to find them quickly so that the therapeutics are actually going to work. And not everyone will have access to the vaccines, mm -hmm. but when they do, there will be selective pressure for a mutated version to pop up and become prominent. And these rapid antigen tests, not yeah. just ours, but these are tests which look for a conserved region of the nucleocapsid protein. Mm -hmm. Those will continue to be useful in identifying uh, you know, infectious individuals. So I think clearly the virus is here to stay. Done. The vaccine's not meant to eliminate the virus. Yes. Sure. Doug, just very, very quickly, clear up the accuracy rate of these rapid antigen tests. Elon Musk has, I think, more than 380,000 likes on a tweet that he put out saying he took four antigen tests. Two of them came back positive, two negative, and he has cold-like symptoms. So, so how accurate are these tests and trustworthy as we're relying on them to increasingly open up and feel more confident? Well, I shouldn't and won't comment on another manufacturer's product, but if Elon were to call right, me... Right, that was Becton, Becton Dickinson. That's right. But if he were to call me, I would say, Elon, be, be careful, because what I'm... My first read when I heard that was, he may have a low... He may be a low-level positive, and you're seeing... Uh, you're seeing uh, assay result that's around the cutoff. So if he were to call me, I would say, Elon, be careful. I, I hope you're not positive. But, but let's be careful. 24 hours from now, let's run another test. You could run a PCR if you like, but you could also run that same rapid antigen test because if he were a low-level positive that was giving an equivocal result, 24 hours later, because of the rapid development of the virus, uh, the viral level, uh, he's going to be positive by any test he does. So my recommendation to Elon would be, uh, I hope you're, well, first, I hope you're negative, 
But run another test in 24 hours because then you'll be positive if it were indeed a low level positive. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.